Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, this time we're gonna start a new series, um, which doesn't mean much because I upload once every month probably, um, but we're gonna talk all about SignalR. Um, in this introductory video I'm gonna tell you what SignalR is, we're gonna implement a super trivial like chat-like application and we're going to deploy it on a server on an actual VPS, right? So that we have something running and then we can make it better, right? Make it work, make it better. Um, so first of all, super quick introduction, what is SignalR? You can find all of this information on MSDN and by all means, if you're interested in like the nitty gritty uh, information stuff, absolutely feel free to check it out. Uh, before we continue, I should also mention that uh, the project is on GitHub. So if you're after just having a working thing that you can play with, that's where you should go. Link should be in the description. But if you just want to like see how it is implemented and understand a little bit behind like why certain changes were made, then you know feel free to stick around. So a super quick introduction. Signal R is a library that allows uh, the communication between a client and a server. That's very nice. The The keyword there, however, that I omitted is real-time. It, uh, it enables real-time communication. So rather than um, refreshing a web page to get the, the, the latest um, uh, content, you just get and you just get a message from the server um, and you can update uh, the content as you go. However, you know, it's not only web stuff. It also enables, as it mentions here, web applications that require high frequency updates from the server, for example, real-time gaming. And that's kind of what we're going to build in this tutorial. I was thinking, not in this tutorial, but this series, I was thinking of making uh, sort of like an ICQ game-like thing, right? Because that would be pretty cool. First of all, I was really good at Zupaluga. I was really shit at this slide llama. Um, Either way, that's kind of maybe what we could uh, what we could build because that looks f sort of interesting and that could work, right? So let us get right into it. So first, let's build a very local, um, very local. Let's build a local uh, version of two applications. We're going to build a client that is a console application and a server that's an ASP.NET Core um, server application, right? Um, these two are going to communicate and multiple clients, multiple consoles will be able to connect to the server, message, and everyone will see each other's messages, right? And then we're going to take this and we're going to deploy it on a VPS. Super simple. And then we can all make changes to it. All right. So first of all, I just made a super simple empty project, nothing in it. Uh, the first thing I did is I created the project files. So right then I created a bunch of, I, I created a new solution with four project, uh, a test project, of course, <laughs> even though we don't use it just yet. But look, you gotta, you gotta think forward. Um, we of course have that console application um, that is targeting .NET 5. I, I thought we should probably target .NET 5 with everything that we do now. Um, you know, it's a new application. There could be a case for .NET standard, but let's let's not think about that just yet. We can always change the core library to not target .NET 5, but standard instead. Uh, but we don't right now. We don't actually use the core library anyways. All we use in this tutorial is the console app and the server, which is um, actually the server. Uh, let's open a terminal. Um, the server is created with the uh, ASP.NET Core empty template, so web. All right. So the first thing that you can probably notice is that it has a lot of like fluff. Um, it has pages here. It has a bunch of like JavaScript and like, you know, jQuery and stuff. Um, we actually don't want that at all because we actually don't want this to host a website. We want, want this to only be a hub. So we want to have a minimal version of, of this. So we're going to do that uh, right up here. All right. So what happened, what I did is I first of all deleted uh, the pages folder that included like the index error, whatever pages. And I deleted the dub 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 root folder with all that JavaScript and stuff because we actually don't need to serve that and we won't. Um, next thing in program, I deleted uh, unused directives, whatever. It's just me. I think I added a new line here. Um, in startup though, 
of course deleted the unused directives but we have a bunch of uh, other changes that we need to do so first of all this is vaguely different but focus on two methods focus on configure services and configure right these two methods are where, where the bulk of changes actually happened right um, I wish we I wish I actually had um, diffs between those two that would probably be uh, probably be a lot more useful however for now also feel free to look at the rip in the repository where uh, this entire source code is already finished um, so first of all we are adding a service dot add signal R that's a good that's a good thing to notice right uh, the second thing is we actually have this new like response compression thing right if you want to know more about that then I encourage you to check out like the signal R uh, tutorials because they they had like a simple like chat tutorial we're basically following that but we um, have two dotnet we have a dotnet client which they kind of do with blazer um, but basically they're they the majority of their examples is have an ASP.NET core proper like web server like web website with the hub right and then have like a JavaScript front end or a TypeScript front end or maybe a blazer front end but there's no need for that we actually can just genuinely have um, a console app so we'll, we're doing that and also they don't minify the project um, it's just again something that I want for this uh, for this project just so we don't comp com what just so we don't I don't know just so we don't make it too complex is what I'm trying to say all right next thing we use uh, response compression I think that might have been there or we were adding it I don't remember uh, HTTP is a redirection we're actually going to delete eventually because we are hiding our server locally behind engines on the VPS so again I'll get to that and of course if you don't um, if you don't have a VPS and you're not familiar with that I had a video about setting up a full ASP.NET website uh, within an hour if you skip the part where we just make uh, create the ASP.NET project so if you skip uh, this here part um, everything else is identical right except you know you don't deploy the ASP.NET well actually this is an ASP.NET project so even then it's identical you do the same thing except this is the, your project right uh, speaking of which if you are on your VPS and you haven't been there for a while uh, make sure to uh, of course connect to your VPS and um, update .NET because we're using .NET 5 so make sure to install the latest version of it and uh, in general update and upgrade your all of your server packages you do that with apt update and apt upgrade all right so um, we kind of we use routing I think that's the that's one of the uh, one of the methods that actually stayed there from the template um, and we of course um, create the uh, chat hub endpoint right now what is chat hub uh, you can see that here it's referenced as a type you can actually probably restart Omnisharp to pick up the changes when you switch branches it kind of freaks out um, chat hub is a is just a let's restore why not um, it is just a class we have it in uh, this hubs folder a uh, plural where we have chat hub uh, the only thing interesting about it is that it uh, it inherits a hub which comes from Microsoft as being a core signal R uh, and it has at this point it has one method but it can have uh, as many methods as we need right so here's the thing this uh, like this class contains uh, methods that clients can call right so for example the send message can be called by any connected client right so that's going to be called from our uh, console app as long as it provides a user and a message a user more like a username and a message um, this will this will trigger right and we have some some nice um, ways ways of working with this we have clients all there's also clients dot others right so that you don't get your own messages but in a way maybe you want to get your own message to make sure that it's received right so maybe if you send a message it's kind of grayed out and once you receive it back you're like okay and so you like uh, I don't know market as sent or whatever right 
So that's just, you know, just so you know. Uh, the next thing is, of course, on top of anything, uh, including just client, like the, the caller, clients.caller, or clients all, clients others, you can call send async, where you can send, uh, invoke a message on theirs, uh, on their system as well, right? So uh, this is the name of the of the of the callback or the method that the client has to have implemented and these are the parameters for that method right fairly simple to understand of course signal r takes care of all of the magic behind the scenes which is really nice right so far so good so of course we're going to eventually define a bunch more uh, methods and actually a bunch more hubs um all right so that's one thing that's pretty good um, other than that, I don't think we actually changed much here. We actually left everything uh, as default. Uh, the, mo the, the main point was cleaning it up so that it doesn't serve an actual website. All right, next up, we create the console client. So now in our console app, we, by the way, we did not t touch core or test, and we don't for this entire episode. Um, next up, we have console app where again we're targeting .NET 5 don't forget that or higher if you if it's .NET 6 if .NET 6 is released then absolutely uh, but we also need to include uh, Microsoft ASP.NET Core signal our client package uh, to be able to connect so again this is something you get in NuGet right if in Visual Studio right click manage packages search for this you find it uh, if you're a console person you navigate to the project directory dotnet add package and this um, of course nothing too complex there but in program CS first of all we are using the implicit main uh, feature of C sharp 9 9 I think um, where we actually don't need to write uh, the the program class and the main method, we can just start writing uh, our code in program CS. Of course, we're probably going to steer away from that later on, but for this example, it's actually pretty cool, right? So first of all, we have we create a hub connection, right? And the hub connection is going to connect to a URL, and the URL is. In this case, HTTP is localhost. That's what uh, the server defaults at. And then slash chat hub. Why chat hub? Where is this coming from? It's actually coming from the startup here where you define uh, literally that chat hub as the class that should handle it, which is our actual chat hub uh, here in hubs, right? So that's how it's wired together. Kind of makes sense. Not that complex, right? Um, so that's how this works. Then you build it, whatever, and then you can define all these methods. So for example, here, hub connection, this is what we just created, and you say on, and then you provide the uh, signature of the parameters, right? It's just like if you remember uh, my video about uh, func and actions, this is more like an action. You define um, the types the types sorry the types that are supposed to be uh that are supposed to be sent or in this case received and then uh you basically name the method like what is the callback that you're responding to and then you actually like uh provide a an action i'm pretty sure the signature would be an action um uh, taking those two parameters Right? So that's how you respond to it. So basically, whenever we receive a message with user and message, where user and message are string and string, uh, we can do certain things. Here, encoded message is lifted straight from the tutorial. Uh, they kind of like say user, you know, colon, what would what, what they send. Uh, what we do is we just add an empty line in case you're in the middle of typing something and just write the message. It's not the cleanest thing. We will actually eventually migrate to a UI framework such as Avalonia or whatever um, where we're gonna have a lot more fun next up is a hub connection you just start it just like if you remember discord bots right you start it except this one it isn't blocking it isn't blocking so it might be useful to await it I'm actually gonna do it in the next commit I think so you don't have to just drop it like that in fact it's uh, you should just await it there's no real like res result from that. And if there is, I just don't use it. Um, but basically, just await it. It's going to be all right. 
and it starts the the connection uh, by also by awaiting um, you're going to get all of the connection errors up front so it is useful to await at first and then we just have a super simple while loop infinite while loop where we just like kind of print like a little little thing here a little arrow and then we get a message from a, you know from the user right and then uh, if the message is exit then we actually just do uh, we await hub connection dispose async which is good to to keep in mind if you have it in a ui application you would have this in your destructor or any other lifetime like end of lifetime handle um, you might have a um, an event being raised or something um, and then we exit the environment but if it's not exit then we genuinely just do hub connection send async and then here we go right we uh, mention the name of the of the uh, of the method in our hub you can see that it's called send message right so can I I cannot go back um, so we reference send message and then we provide um, both parameters user and a message right in our, in our case I just say console user hard-coded for everyone of course we would want user accounts and logins and and uh, user names right and all sorts of stuff and then the message that you typed um, and we just write an empty string just to add a new line so that's pretty cool and actually we can genuinely see this in action so here I am um, in so first of all, this is the server application. So I'm in, as you can see, I'm in community server .NET run, super simple. That's gonna be hosted on, as you can see, localhost 5001, which is good because that's where I'm listening, 5001 chat hub. And then I'll start one of the console applications. I'll do .NET run. And it just gives me a prompt. If I say, actually, let's uh, connect with another one as well. Uh, and at that point, if I do hello world, you can see that um, I receive it as well from the server, which is we can change that behavior. Uh, I receive it too. And also uh, the other user receives it and he can say, what's up? And there we go. So now this is basically the application that we would like to reproduce on, a, on an actual hosted environment, which that would be super cool. And then of course, just, just so you know, right, we can change the behavior of this fairly easily, right? For example, instead of uh, using clients.all, we can use uh, clients.others or other uh, one of those. Uh, of course, my OmniSharp is dead at this point because uh, I'm switching branches too frequently. But, you know, and that will send it only to other people that aren't us. If we want to get, if we want to uniquely identify who this is, we can do a context. And I think there was like a connection ID or some shit, some, something like that. I'm not swearing, I swear. Um, something like that. All right. So that's pretty cool. Um, now let's actually try to deploy it. I have one more commit, actually two more commits. I have finishing touches and uh, the final thing. So the finishing touches, I'm pretty sure are done to the console app where I, uh, yeah, I added a server, server URL where I try to get it from args, from arguments to the console app. And if there aren't any, then I just use the localhost chat hub. But if there are, then I just use that. Right, that's so that we can actually connect to a server. Um, other than that, we also await the actual start async, which is just, you know, that best practice should have been there anyways. Um, and I don't think there's much different. Uh, I might have uh, kind of played around with formatting. Actually, I think I did in the final one where I went to the tutorial content, which is genuinely the version that you should see on GitHub as of uh, recording this video which is by the way which now i can hopefully restart omni sharp and we can get our intelligence back and we're going to now um we're going to uh deploy it on an actual server so first of all prerequisites in order to be able to do that uh you need um you need a vps you need a domain um you need uh, all these things however don't worry as I mentioned before, I made a tutorial all about this, where we actually, we actually get it, get the entire thing, um, 
yeah, we get a domain for less than two bucks and a VPN. Oh, by the way, that's two bucks for uh, for a year of uh, having that domain. Uh, and then we also have uh, the server costs kind of drop to all the way to like three point five dollars a month. Uh, we also on our Discord server uh, had some people saying that they can uh, get domains uh, for free, which that would be pretty cool. Um, it's kind of up to you, uh, but this is a full on like proper tutorial of how to set up the entire thing. We're going to there's going to be something that we need to do after this as well. Um, so first of all, deployment. How do you how do you build and publish this? Um, you can I have an example deploy example where I just dot net publish it, publish the server project in a configuration release, uh, Linux runtime. Uh, it isn't self-contained because I have dot net on my server. You should probably too. Uh, if you followed my tutorial, then you do. Uh, to deployment, then I delete the the PDB, the debug files, and then at that point I just bam SCP it right onto my server, right uh, into var www community in this case. However, that's not going to be enough uh, because, well, well, that's all fine and dandy. I mean, actually, SSH into into my server real quick. We need to do a couple of things. First of all, is edit our engines config, and your your nginx config can be found at uh, let's see if I remember Etsy engine sites available and then the name of your site we created that in uh, the previous video in that setting up an ASP.NET uh, website now the next thing uh, so and we need to change this config right so what we change in this config is I've got a uh, I've got an engine config.md here uh, we can actually view it syntax highlighted and so this this is what we had from setting up um, our server previously with like normal ASP.NET, and you need to add this part to it. It's in it's still in the server declaration. It's right after the location just forward slash. You add a new location, and this time it's forward slash chat hub, and this is the config. This is the configuration. Um, the port. You can specify to be whatever you want. I go for 6969, very funny. Um, but of course, you can set it up to be anything other than if you're actually hosting a real ASP.NET website side by side this, then I did like you of course need uh, a different uh, a different port because you can't launch two ASP.NET applications with the same port, right? Um, you could integrate the whole hub into your main website. That would that would most definitely work, but I prefer to have these like separate. So this is how you would do it uh, for another um, another ASP.NET server. And if you have another ASP.NET server, of course you can add another location, etc., etc., etc. So that's one thing um, you need to do that. And then don't forget that after you edit Nginx config, you need to uh, call what was it forgot how to do it it's i think if i have really really had to guess it's engines dash s restart or something like that uh but i'm sorry i can't forget I, I can't remember it is in the last tutorial though um so you do that at that point you've got it set up then you deploy it um using scp just like we talked about in the last video and once you and eventually your your goal is to have it in var dub 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 um, community. Um, make sure to create this directory as well. You can't SCP into uh, SCP into it if um, it doesn't exist. And if I just ls, this is the deployed ver. This is the deployed um, application. I deployed it just like I did last time in ASP.NET. Right now, we could set up a um, a systemd uh, service to keep this alive, but for the sake of like testing, I'm actually just going to um, run it. Actually, I don't even need to because I've got a build here, community server, and I'm gonna add use dash URLs. All right, uh, figured it out. It was actually just dash dash URLs. Oh well. 
So um, once we have it hosted here and we have the engines configured to, to redirect properly, we can just um, use .NET, actually make sure that we don't have our local server running. We can just run it with HTTPS spell us .NET, um, chat hub. And once we connect to that, we should see, yep, that we are connected. We'll do the same thing here. .NET run HTTPS spell us .NET chat hub. And once we are connected, we can just do hello world. And you can see that we get the same thing, except this time it is over the network. Um, and um, our server is responding. So we connect it to uh, spellus.net forward slash chat hub. Um, and that is what is responding. Cool. Let's exit here. And that is how we create and host a super simple um, signal our client and server application. Uh, now, let me just preface this that this it's not a preface. It's like, I don't know. Let me just add one more thing. And that's, uh, this is a project uh, that can be found on GitHub, uh, just like our last uh, project, which was a Discord bot uh, called Muni. Uh, this project is called Communi, as in communication, I guess. I don't know. Listen, I don't. Ma I actually do make these names up. Um, this one is Communi. The target... Um, or, or the idea with this application is basically to create something kind of maybe like some of the games uh, in the old ICQ. Uh, if you have any ideas, feel free to feel free to contribute. But also maybe it's just a chat application. Who knows, right? We start definitely with the simple uh, chat basics. So at this point, we have literally what you saw right here. This is the actual project. And uh, of course, feel free to to contribute um, or fork it and play around with it. See, see where where that leads you. Maybe you can actually make a cool game or whatever. And if you do, then absolutely let us know on the Discord server. Uh, Spellos.net forward slash Discord is where you find that. And um, all right, so that's going to be it. I hope you guys um, had some fun with uh, real time applications and. Um, I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.